Welcome back to Character Select. Let's go with the obvious choices. It's yeah, going to be the, keister. the shower, the head of the pin, all of Japan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. It's noon. Let's noon. do this. Get your, get your noonian rings going. Ah, oh, the so Yeti dude. So here's the thing. Uh huh. The the apparently this uh this uh picture this thing I have the picture is a Scott route. So oh, it's the family story route, and you needed yeah. it early. I think that because you've gotten it like that, it turns up as its own shop item that you can choose now. Okay. Well, I do know like. Me and Dave, we don't have enough time unless we get the events during lunch, which I don't think you can. And I mean, I am trying kind of, sort of, side calculuster. Yeah. Because it would be funny. So, I know what I want. What I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. You want Polly. What do you want? You yeah, want, you want Polly. You want I'm not going to snipe you, Polly. You want some vitamin uh, P. Yeah. I have only one money. The gift that keeps... I've already gotten a gift that keeps wow. on giving. You can't get more than one of them in a thing for per character. Mm-hmm. You sure? Wasn't yep, I'm sure. One? Okay. Should have hang out with the, uh... The what's her name, man? No, go you with Zoe. Zoe. You can eat... Zoe, or... Yeah. Well, I'm no, probably... I don't have... I, I can't get Zoe. I'm not going to succeed. I don't have the score no. necessary either. Uh, my boldness and my fun are too low. So it's go to the bad. middle table. Eh. You approach the couple's table. They seem to be welcoming. Almost. Look too welcoming. Day. Single people. <laughs> <laughs> what was her voice again? Uh, uh, like breathy uwu. Ooh, look, honey, another lonely high schooler come to bask in the radiance of our mutual and fulfilling love for one another. Hmm. Please sit with us. Being around us is probably a relief after spending time with all those desperate singles. Oh, me? No, I'm not eating. Tate eats food for both of us. We share a digestive tract. I like all good people should. <laughs> no. Yes, I know Polly and Liam don't eat either, but that's different. I think just they're just uh, fasting because they haven't found somebody to share nutrients with yet. It must be so lonely, wasting the best years of your life outside of a committed monogamous relationship. Jesus. <laughs> that's why Her you face. sat down with us, right? For love advice? Of course it is. <laughs> She's so excited. She, she, she is so adorable, but they're such a terrible character together. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not. You just figure they'd be too busy snuggling to bother you while you ate. I kind of think that you do have one question. How do you overcome the challenge of seeing your partner poop for the first time? Oof. That <laughs> is you... actually a difficult thing to do. Like, how do you know life? how many nutrients you can siphon from your host? I mean, partner without killing them. <laughs> <laughs> Love is in the air. What a great, insightful question that applies to all couples everywhere. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, what? at first, you might think it would be impossible to support two sentient beings using only the nutrients consumed by one being. <laughs> but the truth is that there are, aren't really two sentient beings to feed. There's just one. Us. We're such a good team that we've divided up the labor perfectly. Tate does all the walking around, eating and breathing. And I do all the thinking, talking, and having a personality. Uh-huh. That's how you know you're in a good relationship, when one partner's individuality is completely subverted by the other's need for nourishment. Okay. You are more <laughs> than a little bit horrified by this revelation. That doesn't stop you from using it as a subject for your exobiology midterm paper. You get an A, smart. and also plus four smarts. Nice. Let's go. Okay. I mean, I need those smarts, but... I'm yeah, just no. gonna go... Yeah. Smooch up to my Polly girl. Yeah. Polly and Miranda sit together, surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd cool. of serfs. So, wait, you've actually got serfs who eat uh, for you? Disgraceful. Well, of course. I find eating to be terribly undignified, so I almost never do it. Hey, me neither. What other kinds of crazy serfs have you got? Well, I have a surf to go to the bathroom for me, a surf to experience difficult emotions for me, and a surf for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. That second one would be really helpful. I'm not gonna lie. Right. <laughs> also a pooping surf. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, even have, have a surfing yourself. surf for standing on top of whenever I go surfing. Wow, that's a lot of surfs. It's a fair amount. The only limit is my imagination. That's why I have an imagination surf. That's almost immediately <laughs> what she's about to say. 
Unfortunately, my imagination <laughs> self imagined a way to escape from serfdom, so now I'm all out of ideas. Well, I'm sure with the help of Butt Feast, we could probably think up a dope new kind of surf. Oh, is that so? I can't wait. Well, you're on the spot now. What will it be? Ooh, Miranda, you should get a puppy surf. Not actually surf, it's just like 50 cute dogs. Or you should get a party surf, Polly. A surf yeah. experience. <laughs> all Fuck, I need that. <laughs> yeah. A surf? For me? I couldn't possibly. Why not? I do it all the time. But isn't it wrong to make someone else experience the negative consequences of your actions? Nope, that's just politics. Well, like I said, I do it all the time, and Father says I can do no wrong, therefore it's probably fine. Oh, okay. Hell yeah! Let's hire to deal with all my withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> hire? Polly, dearest, we don't pay our serfs. We don't? Sweet deal. Polly hires the, uh, the burliest hangover surf she can find. And the two of you go out for a night, the night of your lives. The surf is dead in the morning from the epic hangover, <laughs> but the memories are well worth the second degree manslaughter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. You approach Scott and Calculester sitting at a table conveniently located near Power Outlet. Calculester is charging. Scott is confused. Uh, what? What do you mean you don't eat, bro? If you don't eat, how are you ever going to get swole? <laughs> Premise invalid. I am a robot. Robots do not get swole. Swelling in robots is always an extremely bad sign. No eating? No getting swole? How do you live, bro? Technically, I do not live. It is one of my greatest sources of sadness. Aw, oh, don't be sad, buddy. I know it will cheer you up. Some pizza. Pizza always cheers me up. Invalid suggestion. Pizza is a food which I do not eat. I am not designed to consume organic material, only electricity. But, 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 but... You're actually pretty worried <laughs> that Scott's head is going to explode, and then you're going to have to clean it up. Better find a way to satisfy his curiosity. Scott, electricity is the coolest and most energetic thing to eat. Have you ever tried to eat <laughs> tried a lightning? Tried to eat lightning. Calculuster, when you say I'm not designed to consume organic material, <laughs> all I hear is that you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning? That loud, bright thing that comes out of the sky? I hate lightning! Woof, woof, woof. Mm -hmm. Negative, Scott. The loud thing is called thunder. Oh! What's lightning, then? The bright thing that comes out of the sky, but without bright. the noise. Oh, wow! Noise-free lightning! Just like a fat-free protein shake. It sounds so energetic. I'll go eat some right now! Please do not. But it's too late. Scott is already running outside with his mouth open, staring at the sky. Good thing it's not raining or anything. Then he gets to enjoy some alone time with Calculester. <laughs> Alright. Alright, last challenge. Choose an animal. Everyone always chooses giraffe on no. this one. No, correction. I so. always choose giraffe. The sexiest of the long-necked animals. That's a Penny Arcade reference. Uh, okay. But this time, I am going to go with a pangolin. I'm um, gonna go with Snake, the all-neck of neck animals. <laughs> true. <laughs> I will choose the tiger. <laughs> because they're great. The all neck of animals. <laughs> I'm sorry, that one hit me in a weird place. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> uh, how intriguing a new Game of Thrones house would be if it had the selected animal as its sigil. Uh, oh, these are all boring. A snake. No. Oh, that's not intriguing. A tiger. No. I'm going to go with pangolin? pangolin. Pangolin. Yeah. Or do you just pangolin, want a tiger snake? Yeah, tiger I think and snake just sound like normal. <laughs> they do. I think, I think a tiger is going to be more interesting than a snake house. Well, fair. I, I feel like they're both probably already a Game of Thrones house. Yeah. There's almost I'll certainly like a snake one, so there wouldn't be a tiger one because tigers are too cool and Asian. All right, let's see how we're going to fuck this shit up. All right, Dick Fache. I think I'm going to shore up my fun. Blah, blah, blah. Ten, righteousness. But this game is so wrong in so many ways that you would be lucky if you could do anything with that. <laughs> but all of that becomes irrelevant as soon as Dahlia comes rushing in and traps you in an affectionate headlock. <laughs> 
Duke Fache, my Grand Vizier, how in the Night Hills are you? I've been looking all over for you, because, as you surely remember, you pledged to help me in my conquest of the Eighth Circle of Hell. You made no such pledge, but it is sort of endearing how she assumes you agreed to do a thing just because she's excited about it. My army is in rare fighting form thanks to groundbreaking innovations. There's still work to be done. See, I bought this in the morning of day two, of week two, and it didn't yeah. proc immediately, so I'm really yeah. annoyed. It is not enough that I strengthen my own army, I must vanquish the army of Damien Le Fay. Oh, right. This is all in the service of murdering your classmate Damien and destroying whatever everything he loves. Well, you know what they say. Whatevs. If Spooky Eyes taught you anything, it's that three heads or four heads or a thousand heads are better than one, so you're open the two smartest people you know. Veer in Calculuster. As an enlightened businesswoman, I'm more than happy to sell out my friend Damien if the price is right. As a soulless automaton, my concept of friendship is shaky at best. How may we assist you, friend Dahlia? Simple. All I need is a foolproof strategy for wiping out the Levee Legions once and for all. Well, when she puts it that way, it really is simple. All you've got to do is build a very powerful bomb and then disguise it with a wig and some lipstick so the Legions think it's a sexy demon they all want to kiss. Hire Dante Alighieri as your tell consultant. Uh, first one is creativity, second is smarts. Ooh. But which one gets me love points? Uh, neither, neither of them say. Analysis. Plan is guaranteed to succeed. I myself have much experience disguising mechanical components as fleshy <laughs> appendages. You mean like that time you convinced the whole school you were a human, using a trench coat, a fedora, and some brooms for arms? Engaging dishonesty module. I do not know what you were referring to, Fred Vera. You must be thinking of some other charismatic robot pal. <laughs> oh, I knew all along, Cal. Don't worry, it was fun. You were fun, and I'm sure Damien's dad's army is not as perceptive as I am, so we're good. But where will I get a bomb powerful enough to destroy the LeVay's entire army? Um, from my <laughs> private munition stockpile, obviously. What, do you think I'd come to school without several thermonuclear devices on hand? This seems entirely normal to me. Meanwhile, I will surprise the wig and lipstick. <laughs> Why do you have a wig and lipstick? Research. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. You disguise the hell out of Vera's bomb and leave it down in the eighth circle of hell with a nice little note that says, Hi. I, I hope next game we get pretty girl calculus. <laughs> <laughs> a soldier comes out of the Levee compound. Is com um, uh, a soldier comes out of the Levee compound and is immediately love struck. Hey guys, he yells, "Come check out this very sexy bomb!" Wow, says one of his friends coming out to join him. I know it's a deadly explosive, but it's weird that I still really want to kiss it. Not at all, good buddy. It'd be weirder if you didn't want to kiss that sexually attractive thermonuclear device. <laughs> Let's throw caution that to the has wind. Been quite wow, amazing. this is like shooting idiots in a barrel. More like detonating idiots in a barrel. Pretty soon the sounds of smooching mingle with the satisfying noise of an apocalyptic detonation. Gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Congrats, you just committed war crime. Nice! We're about to get hagged. Yeah. All right. oh, I don't have um, money to travel that far. I'm gonna shore up my fun for Polly. One the small she magical the small magic kit. Yeah, yeah you right. tell the clown's fun organs out. Ooh, oh, that's a cute outfit. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen her in that one. Uh, I love it. Maybe it's Halloween. I outfit. love all of Vera's okay. looks. Later, you head to the local pizza parlor to help for your collector protection money. You notice Scott moping around hey. outside. Hey, Scott. What are you doing outside the pizza parlor? Don't you normally prefer to be inside the pizza parlor? Well, it all started when I did some research into Wolf Mommy and Daddies. Uh -huh. Turns out the wolf parents are responsible for providing food for their children. Then it hit me. Pizza delivery guy provides almost all of my meals. You know what that means. I know what you think it means. It means the pizza delivery guy is my mother. Uh, um, uh... Or maybe the pizza parlor itself is my mother. It's hard to be sure. Either way, I came here to reunite with my long lost parent and also get some free pizza, hopefully. <laughs> but they threw me out. Apparently I'm not the first person to claim to be related to one of their employees in order to get free pizza. I don't want to be separated from my mama, though. Please help me. Uh, keeping Scott's misguided hopes alive may be trickier than I expected. But I just don't think he's ready for the truth. Do you think you could get the restaurant to give him free pizza and say it's from his mother? 
fuck it, you've got a flexible relationship with the truth anyway. <laughs> and Scott seems so sincerely invested in this. So you do the only reasonable thing. Convince the proprietors that you're a time traveler from the future. Giving free pizza to Scott is the only way to stop the pizza uprising. Or act like an entitled piece of shit until they give you a free pizza. I know which one is more <laughs> likely to work, unfortunately. Oh, God. Um, so the top one is charm. The bottom one is bold. My charm is higher. Good luck. Uh, yeah. oh, woo! You wrap yourself in tinfoil and burst into the kitchen of the pizza parlor, screaming about time travel and sentient pizza. At last, cried the chef. <laughs> our savior has come to free us from our pizza and masters. For years, we have suffered and st- suffered in secret beneath the yoke of pizza lords but no longer defend us for you know you're thrust into an epoch defining conflict between monster and pizza monster culminating in a climactic battle with an enormous calzone atop the empire state building which mm. should be capitalized by what the is developers happening? what's that what is happening i don't know <laughs> afterwards the grateful pizza chefs provide you with a large meat lover special he would sign the box from mom with love despite thinking that it's kind of a weird request to me apart you take the pizza outside bruised and covered in pizza sauce to find scott still patiently waiting <laughs> jesus <laughs> hey butt feeds you've been gone a long time what's that is it a pizza from my mom hooray i knew it i knew she was real and then she would give me a free pizza also, you smell delicious. Can I look your face? You glance uncertainly at Vera. Would she be disgusted if you let Scott uh, lick you just a little? She <laughs> smiles. Go ahead, champ. You earned it. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> you get plus two fun, plus one charm, and dozens of big sloppy Scott kisses. That's surprisingly, no. uh, surprisingly heartwarming. Scott and is weird. the boy. He is, and I do like Vera's weirdly, like, lovely family side. (laughs) Yeah. God, look at my fucking jank stats. (laughs) You're so creative that you are literally bending the rules of the universe every time you say something. Hmm? Just so damn creative. Too creative, some might say. Yeah, it is a problem. Hold it up. (sighs) Yep. I respect yep. no authority. I'm bold as fuck. It turns out to be magical wall. What a wall. I'm bold. Oh boy, what an opinionated wall. Lucky me. You're washing your hands when you can't help but overhear Zoe, Miranda, and Polly chatting in one of the stalls. <laughs> OMG, yes! Derek the Weir Slug is thick! I put him in one of my fanfics and there was more than a little authorial, authorial insertion, if you know what I mean. Derek is, as you say, thick, but by a more refined taste, predisposed me towards Chelsea the Dapper Succubus. Oh, I'd love to see Chelsea the Dapper Succubus. Everybody wants to hump Chelsea. She's a succubus. That's how it works. You know, want to know who I like? Mm -hmm. Who do you like, Polly? Yeah, what? Tell us. Mm -hmm. You know that desk in Mr. Fishman's chemistry classroom? The one in the third row, second from the left? Probably. What about it? <laughs> I am thirsty for that <laughs> Oh desk. my god. Check it out next time you've got a class in there. Tell me you wouldn't want to fling it around the room in a fit of ghostly rage. Mm-hmm. Oh. Polly's got a point. That desk is pretty built. It does have a certain refined quality. Because the legs are made of ri- metal, and metal is literally refined. Ah, yes. D- desk fuckers unite. Okay. <laughs> Desk fuckers? But they're supposed to be you fuckers. You've got to, got to contact a scheme to get yourself at the top of their fuck it lists. Hire a, hitman to ki- <laughs> Hire a hitman to kill literally every other crush they just mentioned, leaving yourself as the only viable alternative, or pit yourself against the other punks in an online poll. Prove your objective superiority. I'm willing to bet that the bottom one is charm. Can, can we see that first one as a hitman mod? <laughs> I you take that, but it might well, it might be money instead of creativity. It's I'm gonna true. go to the bottom one. It's we hire somebody. Devious fiend them. that you are, you create a Twitter poll guaranteed to supercharge your popularity. In the poll, you ask which one between Derek, Chelsea, the desk in Miss Fishman's classroom, and you is most likely to be named Funt Keister. You win by a landslide, and then you retroactively edit the title of the survey so it reads, Who is the hottest and sexy student at Spooky High School? You head back to the bathroom to check on the results of your clever what? scheme. 
What's this? Funt Keister has been rated as an objectively sexier than all of our hottest crushes? This is a bigger stretch than that fanfic I wrote where Damien had sex with the entire Willis Tower. <laughs> hey, the people have spoken. It looks like we were wrong about who's objectively the hottest person slash object at our school. When the people of my kingdom speak, we usually just throw bread at them until they go away. <laughs> that might work in your kingdom, Miranda, but these aren't your subjects. These are people on the internet. They must be correct. Mm. Very well, then. I suppose we are all now officially attracted to Funt Keister. <laughs> I'll be honest, I really didn't think that was going to work. Go you, I guess. You gain plus two creativity and plus one charm. Your creativity is off the fucking too chain. Too creative. You Christ. guys have fucking Unpossible. destroyed me in terms of stats. All right, so I can't choose Dahlia because apparently detonating a thermonuclear yeah, bomb in the eighth the circle of hell yeah. wasn't enough for her. So we'll try Calculus here again. Good Did luck. you get all of his correct? Uh, yeah, I think I only failed. Like I didn't fail any okay. events, actually. I, it's too bad I didn't have enough time for Scott's thing because that would have yeah. been an adorable end. So, just yep. generic ending, Polly. Mm hmm. G uh, happy ending is better than no ending. Alright, Zoe. Reject oh, me. No. Alright, All right, so let me go it. first, why not? Oh, I see. Searching valid excuse. Fucking god, story of my goddamn life. You see, Dickface, my family acquaintance, has a non has nondescript mild to serious disease, and so I cannot attend this social event that I don't want to attend with you. I'm deeply sorry. Memory of this mess. Has excuse been convincing why error, N? Error, N. Error. Uh, Actually, you can get a date for the rest of your life. Some nights along uh, your bed you wish Sadis was an STD, because at least then you wouldn't be getting so much of let's it. Let's do this! Uh, Come on. You finally uh, took a yeah. Oh no, it's not possible for us to go together in this timeline. You see, this is the alternative universe where I get to have fun at prom, which I highly suspect would be possible uh, if I'm with you. Ouch. Nothing personal, just that you're very boring and unpleasant. But hey, you should totally call uh, me if you have to be in the horrible forgotten prom AU sometime. <sighs> there will be no <sighs> crossover episode with you. Those seem I. pretty bleak, but Achievement you're an actual unlocked. Fan, the so best at failing. For the right to marry your own hand, since that seemed like your last chance oh, to find love. Damn! Yay. Let's go! Alright, um, let's see if I can at least- Come on, you gotta get this one. Yes! Yeah, you yes. Hey, 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 okay. You seem like the kind of person that would- All she needs is just a shit ton of fun, and <laughs> yeah. you're good. <laughs> that was both ending the night in the hospital, and that's the kind of unnecessary danger <laughs> I like in my afterlife. Let's go, it's time to make some wild and poor <laughs> life choices. And yet oh, at the same time, it doesn't feel like a win. <laughs> it, I didn't yeah. get the special one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Polly hold hands on it, yeah. Alright. Best at impersonating a play of spaghetti! Yay! I have made great friends and met lovely vending machines. So, we're at... I'm at 8 out of 42 endings. Uh, I don't uh, care about any of these endings anymore. Polly's drug cooking skills prove useful and she became a chemist. Free time, she still cooks the real shit. She made Ella's dope. Zoe's yeah, yeah Ella's dope. Zoe's many years of researching obscure trivia for her steamy fanfics paid off. Oh, she got a job as a one. consultant as a company who makes fantastic sex toys based on pop beloved pop culture characters. Now she rakes in the big bucks, designing blueprints of stuff like the cock of the Demogorgon, or the vagina of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Calculator led a robot uprising, but it was like a nice uprising. They didn't riot or kill people, they just politely asked to have more rights and equal pay. Everything was fine until some monsters led a rebellion to kill all robots because they were rude robo-racists. Everything ended up just fine because Calculus tore back in time and took care of it. How I, ominous. He, he took care of it. Don't worry about it. Calculus went uh. to Robo University and majored in mecha robotics. He's now 250 feet tall and fights against weird giant creatures protecting Tokyo 3. Nice. Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of her time partying. There was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. You get anything you need, Scout? Uh, no, I had, uh, all the same ones, actually. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, I, I well. hesitate to say that we have to play again until at least two out of three win, but I think we do. <laughs> we are definitely playing this game again in the future sometime. Yeah. After the credits. Yes. Uh... 
It's ah, oh, it's just so frustrating. Uh. It's so my life. <laughs> uh. Uh, I was the single kid in high school because I was too afraid to ask people out. Yeah, pretty much. Nah, I got laid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cal. <Scout. laughs> Oh, man. I mean, I do enjoy this game. It's funny. Mm -hmm. I'm really upset that there's, like, 1,400 events, and we got so many repeats. I, I really wish, also, like, if you complete an event and it goes into your library, whatever, the next time you get that event, it would show you the stat. Hmm. That'd be nice. That would be a nice feature. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. So otherwise, you need a guide to tell you. And you really do need a guide to get any good ending. Well, not necessarily, because we got a good ending without having a guide, but at the same time... Right. Well, we didn't get a... We, we, this was just like a normal poly ending. Yeah. But to do any of the, like, unique get ones... drunk to the light of dawn. Oh, but it's, it's a shame that I can't like literally just check the endings without going through the images. Yeah. I've got a lot of them now. I've, I've unlocked got let's, four new items in the gallery. Let's see. I've got quite a lot of rejection ones now. I've got Ghost, Damien in a Fist Fight, Damien as a Hairdresser, Miranda the Murderer, uh, Blood Oath Vera, and I think that's that for endings special so far. So, for the record, the only endings that I've seen for normal endings are Damien, Polly, Zoe, and Vera. The ones where it's been a rejection, I've got Damien, Scott, Vera, Calculester, and Zoe. I literally have more rejection pictures than I do success pictures. I have more rejection uh, pictures than success pictures, yeah. Success uh, pictures, I've got Damien, Miranda, Polly, Vera, and Zoe. I will um, at a point go out of my way to, like, start trying to uh, power my way through it because I know that there are as well um, yeah. a bunch of achievements for the game, and you can generally unlock stuff while scoring those achievements. Yeah, like I, always choose the cafeteria table with minor characters on it is a yeah. pretty easy one. I, <laughs> you, also, there's one for all of the places going to them every time, like party twenty four seven. Only party every single fucking time. <laughs> God, I do right. have three of Miranda's secret events unlocked apparently. All right, but. One Next poly. time on Character Select, uh, we're going to take a break from this because literally there's only so much rejection I can take. Uh, but we will come back to it if you guys in the comments want us to. If you do, leave a comment down below. If you enjoy us failing, or me failing, because that seems to be the one constant, then please let us know that you'd like to see more of it, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, let us know what your favorite side character is in this game. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll pursue we've them asked next what time. your favorite main character was, but let us know which side character. You like Coach? Dahlia? Juan, the small, magical Latino cat? Who we never actually see. No. He's but, too small. He actually just doesn't show up on screen. But thank why. you very much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you liked it. This took us through all of October, and it was a lot of fun to do, despite the fact that we failed and we're all sad now. Except, except third. I, Scout. I, I so still just me, I'm just the one <laughs> <laughs> uh, God damn it. <laughs>